all right now we're in the right place right so officially recording now so I've made some changes to the settings which I'm going to show you in a minute and why am I getting lower frames now I was getting 45 we'll figure out what happens when we take off okay let's do our Right, okay, so off we go to waypoint one. There we go, back up to 45 now. I think he was just rendering everything in. So I've taken some advice from the very helpful of those of you that have commented extensively on the videos I've released so far and one of the main pieces of advice that I was given was to leave my pixel density in DCS at 1.0 and to do the render resolution settings in Oculus Home which I have done. I have enabled Oculus Trade Tool although I don't think I've changed any settings in it. I am running a server currently, although I am the only pilot that's in it. I believe we are in the uh, Sinai map. And I've made a few videos on this map before with my Quest 2. So it might be worth having a look at those to see sort of what the difference is. From the point of view of the pilot, the, the biggest noticeable difference that I am seeing, other than the obviously better clarity of lenses, excuse me while I just get rid of that stupid envelope in the top left, is that when I turn my head and when I look around, the, there is an, a complete absence of stuttering and jittering. Now, what there is, what I have noticed, and I think again this is more to do with my DCS settings, is what someone beautifully referred to in one of my, um, in the comment section of one of my videos as the jaggies or the jagged edges, which seem to be around some things. Uh, now, I was flying the MI-8 yesterday and I noticed that particularly around the switches there seem to be quite a lot of jaggies even on the same settings that I'm using at the moment. And I think that when I was in my Quest 2, because it kind of looked a bit like in the Quest 2 like someone had just smudged a bit of Vaseline on the lenses just to blur things. They weren't quite as clear, I wasn't seeing the pixels on the headset as clearly due to the Fresnel lenses and probably my glasses prescription which is quite strong. Um, although I am wearing glasses at the moment um, and I've also figured out that I can in fact with the glasses I'm wearing have the headset with the facial interface set as close to the um, display as is possible and still wear them comfortably without the lenses catching on or touching the my glasses with the lenses which obviously I don't want to do because they'll scratch 45 FPS feels more like 60 or even more with these current settings and I have said this before in my previous and I know I'm flying out over the desert at the moment and there isn't anything to really look at. All of that is about to change uh, in a few minutes time. I still don't think that the clouds are looking particularly great for me in VR. Uh, but they, they never have. especially far away there's a little bit of sort of jitteriness like Z fighting I think I've mentioned that before 
I've got my jet seat plugged in at the moment, so I've got um, a little bit of vibration coming up through the seat. Oh, yes, that's the other thing I meant to mention. I I normally use um, HyperX Cloud 2 headphones when I fly in DCS because the Quest 2, I seem to get a lot of audio cutting out and it was very distracting and I couldn't hear what people were saying over Discord or simple radio. Yeek. And it's all together just feels like a much more polished experience. Now I am not running the latest hardware and I've been asked by lots of people about my hardware setup. I have an i7-9700K processor which is on a Z390 motherboard uh, and, a, and an RTX 3080 Ti and 32 gigabytes of RAM although it is only 3000 megahertz and it is only DDR4. I do have all NVMe M.2 SSDs, so I have that going for me, but, okay, this is the bit I always get wrong, because I've got to land somewhere down there, and I've got to also not rip my rotor blades off, and stay below 60 AGL. So excuse me while I do that, but everything just looks so much better, so much more responsive, and I know that there have been some videos made by VR sim guy and he is running a really really powerful rig and my piece simply be able to handle the high-end VR headsets such as the Pimax Crystal and the, the Aero and the um, I can't remember what it's called big screen VR or whatever it is there we go I've got to land down there it slows down tries not to crush the helicopter so there's a lot more going on here oops catch it there's the collective in the right position uh, and I did get a slight reduction in frame rate there but it was staying above 40 but there's no latency when I turn my head it's really um, smooth things in the cockpit look really good I don't know about I might have to play with the gamma setting because I think one or two things look a little bit dark in the cockpit. The Gazelle was one of those aircraft where I really didn't like the uh, instruments. It was hard to read some of them. It's much easier. There we go. It's much easier uh, now with the um, the new Quest. Um, see, so we're getting a little bit of a lower frames. There. You know, I am. I do think that I've actually got higher settings now with the new headset than I was able to do with the Quest 2. Um, I'm, I think I'm pretty much at, at the limit of what my uh, air, my PC can handle. And, and a few people have sort of talked about shadows, I've got shadows off, they, they just don't work that great for me. I'm, I'm trying to fly in some of the more demanding maps when there's a lot more sort of stuff going on. Um, to, to do the tests. It's difficult to test what it's going to be like in every single aircraft, in every single mission. Um, I haven't really done much in terms of multiplayer yet, so that's my next big lot of testing I need to do in terms of performance. I have to accept that I can't have some of my settings on high, but the frame rate and the smoothness is more the making up for the lack of super visual perfection. Now what I'm supposed to do actually is fly along and land on the foredeck of those ships but I don't think I'm going to be able to do it because I think there's a problem with the mission but we'll see. I can't blame poor flying on my Oculus or Meta Quest 2 being a bit laggy at times or dropping frames. I must take full responsibility now. 
it's definitely an upgrade if you're if you're a Quest 2 owner and you're on the fence about a Quest 3 I I think it's a good buy especially if you're getting reasonable performance on your Quest 2 I don't know if I'm supposed to land on it or hover on it we'll, we'll see Oh, okay, I think I've broken something on the helicopter. Have I? No, I'm still flying. There we go. Crew chief is not going to be too happy. So that's what I think. Um, for now, I want to quit this and then jump quickly into the settings so you can see what my settings are in DCS. Like I said, a maximum render res in Oculus Home. So system settings, um, what have I changed? I put MSAA on two times, but I put SSAA on two, and that really did away with a lot of the jagged edges. That really seemed to make a big difference for me, turning that on. It's not something I've ever used before. Um, and it's a Tropic, it's on 16. I haven't really touched anything else. So that the main thing I did was VR settings, pixel density to one. Uh, as as I was advised to do by several people, um, and then I turned MSAA from four to two, and I and no one's told me to do this, but I've done it, and and it seems to have a, a good effect. Um, and of course, my render res is max, so that's that for now. So I hope you've enjoyed that. I hope it was useful, and please. Um, keep commenting because every day is a school day. Thanks again. Bye now.